Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Monday afternoon. Hope you're well. Hope you're looking forward to a, a solid week. You know, whatever is you up to this week. Hope you're looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about really uh, the game. Obviously, that happened Saturday afternoon. I was uh, I was a little bit tired yesterday, so I didn't actually do any videos. But I will talk about because I was at the game. Um, talk a little bit about the interest from a rival Premier League team in Lloyd Kelly, as well as the interest in Joe Roden being sold this summer. So plenty to talk about, plenty to get into. Just want to say, if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let me just quickly start about the game at the weekend. Brighton, uh, obviously, the game was a game of two halves, as maybe we could sum it up. I think for the first 30 minutes, Spurs were naff, to be honest. Naff is the word I'm going to go with. You could always go something stronger, but I'm going to go naff. Um... <clears throat> Couldn't get on the ball. The midfield just weren't getting the ball from the defence and, and progressing it. It just didn't look anything like the intensity as well that, that we normally play with. Obviously, he gave it, giving away a, a, a sloppy penalty. Um, you know, Brian, Brian were hitting the floor fairly easily, so we needed to be a bit more, a little bit more patient in our tackling, a little bit more aware of our tackling, but we didn't. Um, second half came out like just really like we actually. We normally play, you know, high intensity, getting the ball, getting it forward quickly, and so on and so forth. And yeah, got the goal <clears throat> to make it one. I think it was deserving the goal. I think we, you know, we created at that point some decent opportunities. Um, weird that the substitutions happened and actually felt like the momentum of the game just kind of stopped. I don't think any team really took a hold of the game there and then. Um, until really brought uh, Spurs at the end, and you know it's qu it's quite funny. Obviously, Hoiberg hitting over not long for the the guy actually, and I think a lot of people kind of went that was that was it, that's it. There's no more coming. And obviously, uh, yes, yeah, Spurs getting the goal at the end. You know, being at the game, it's quite interesting to see, you know listen to people around you. You know, you get people kind of going. Oh, that was ridiculous. He was sitting near me, and he uh, there was a guy going, "Oh, keep hold of it, keep hold of it, keep hold of it." And then as soon as Spurs passed backwards, it was like, what are we doing? It was like, right, you clearly don't really understand what, what we need to do. And you clearly don't understand football. You know, we can't always go forward. You can't always hold on to the ball. If you could, trust me, you know, the prime bosses or, or, or the Pep's bars, uh, Bayerns, they would hold on to 100% of the ball, but they can't. So, yeah, you kind of get people that are a little, a little bit li living in the moment, looking like an idiot around them. Um but, you know, all in all, it was good to see, obviously, Pesuma back. Good to see uh, Sonny back. Obviously, we'll probably see La Celso back for um, uh, for Wolves next, I think it is, on the 17th. You know, it, slowly but surely getting fitter. And slowly but surely, the players who have just come back. But this is the other thing we need to remember. You know, Bentoncourt came back early from an injury. He's not long, you know, he had not been long back from his ACL injury. He goes out with another big injury. You've got Madison who was out for months on end. You've got Sonny who's just come back from the Asian Cup. You know, Basuma just came back from the African Cup of Nations and had malaria as well. You know, you think of the two centre-halves that missed a ton of football. I think people are expecting Spurs to be playing the football of where we were in like sort of September, October. You need a reality check that the, the guys aren't all there yet. Even though you see them playing, they're not all there. Be patient. Don't worry, it will come. Stop being a reactionary person. But yeah, look, it was a good win in the end. You know, obviously Man United beating um, Aston Villa last night. Spurs into the top four now. St you know, still six points ahead of Manchester United, even though Manchester United still think, you know, oh, we're, we're in the top four. You know, we're, we're, we're climbing the league. You, know, you, you started the weekend six points behind Spurs. You finished the weekend six points behind Spurs with one less game to play to the end of the season. <sighs> I love Twitter sometimes, I really do. But anyway, let's talk about some chances anyway. And uh, we're going to start with Lloyd Kelly. And uh, it, so it came from Ekram Kanor to start off with. He said that Newcastle United are planning to offer Bournemouth's 25-year-old defender Lloyd Kelly a three-year contract. Liverpool, Tottenham, AC Milan, Juventus and Borussia Dortmund have all been linked with the English player. Right? So you always, you always hope there's like a second report that comes out about it. So you can kind of see there's some, there's some truth to this. Craig Hope, the uh, Daily Mail sport, he is quite in the know when it comes to Newcastle. And he said that Bournemouth pair Lloyd Kelly and Philip Billing on Newcastle list ahead of summer. Kelly is free and has a good relationship with Howe. Makes a lot of sense, but there will be competition. 
Um, and then, yeah, Graham Bailey just finished off with, which said that Bournemouth's Lloyd Kelly is weighing up his future with Premier League trio Tottenham, Newcastle and Liverpool, all indicating they are willing to make offers for the soon to be out of contract defender. Kelly has already held talks with foreign sides. So look, this is a guy, and this is how I try to explain to people, this is a guy who starts week in, week out for, you know, a, a solid team in the Premier League. You know, they're, yes, they're not a top six team, but they're a solid team. You know, the fact he is in his mid-twenties, he's not even hit his prime yet. He's on a free, he's homegrown, he knows the Prem in and, in and out. This player on the market is 25, 30 million, easy. That's what I mean by this. And because he's free, if you did sell him in a few years and you got, let's say, 20 million, you know, it helps your financial fair play even. So, you know, that's the thing you know, that I think everyone is so keen on. A three-year deal is a bit odd, though, for a 25-year-old. You thought it'd be like a five-year deal, wouldn't you? I don't know if that's a financial fair play thing. I don't know, but look, I don't. I don't see Spurs not being the only team interested. In. We know we know of teams in Italy that are interested in him. You know the fact that Liverpool, you know the fact that Newcastle are interested in him. You know it's all these things. I think the thing that you can say against the Italian league is yeah, there's a lot more money here. There's a lot more uh, eyes on you, so, you know, when it comes to sponsorships or you know, you know, drumming up your own sort of media profile. It's easier here than it is abroad. You know, people don't talk about Tamori, but he's a really solid defender. People talk about <clears throat> people talk about Mark Way a lot more. People talk about Harry Maguire a lot more. Are they both better than Tamori? You know. Um, so yeah, well, look, we'll keep an eye on it. I think there's going to be a story I'm going to be talking about a lot coming towards the end of the season into the summer, anyway. And uh, yeah, talking about another one that I think I'm going to be talking about a lot was Joe Roden, and it came. Uh, it came from Football Insider, said that Tottenham are looking between 10 and 15 million to sell Leeds United Yoni, Loney Joe Roden next summer. It's believed that multiple Premier League clubs inquired about the centre-back in January transfer window, but were put off by Spurs' valuation. <clears throat> Look, there's no money really for some teams in January because of the financial fair play situation. So I think a lot of teams probably wanted, you know, a really cheap deal. You know, and I think Spurs are going... Why would we sell him on the cheap when the summer we'll probably get more money for him because people got more money to spend. And if Leeds come up, they've got a lot more money to spend and they will come back in for him and get him. And the fact Premier League teams want him is not surprising. Leeds United, if they come up, you know, does he stay there with the team that he came up with potentially? All those things you do consider, but, you know, there'll be money in the summer. You can, you'll get 15 million for Joe Roden. I really do think you'll get 15 million for Joe Roden because all you've got to do is pit two or three teams against one another and say, look, They've offered this. What are you doing? Because if you're offering anything less than that, we're not accepting it, obviously. Before you know it, you'll get to the £15 million mark. I, I really do think you will, because £10 million, I think you get more than that. I do, you know. If he was on a five-year deal, you're easily at £15 million for sure. In fact, he's only got one year left in the summer. That's the only sort of nagging part to all of this. But I do see him being sold. I do see it being reinvested. And I do see that money being quite crucial to our summer transfer plans, you know. But anyway, guys, in the video, I hope you enjoyed. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section your thoughts of Ian's battle. See the game on on the weekend. Happy to know what you're thinking about that. Obviously, Lloyd Kelly and Joe Roden interest. Want to know your thoughts of Ian's about that as well. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, in the video, I'll see you all very very soon. Take care, guys.